I'm going to start us off with our sponsors, and then we'll get into the DAF today. Um, okay, Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Rubin ben Leibish, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara, Nissen ben Fardosa. Paul and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda ben Yisrael, Malka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust, Arav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bad Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Halevi, Friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bat Yisrael Dov. Friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef. Friends of Avi Gitler, Avram Meya Ben Shimon. Shall assure her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Ben Harav Shimon. A week of learning sponsored by Minnie Shavrik, in memory of all those we lost in the past year, by Siggy and Lala Bessler, in memory of his father, Dov Beresh ben Meshulam Fivish, by Yossi Pelig Billig, in memory of his father, Meir ben Shmuel, by Herschel and Mira Senet, in memory of his mother, Reitz Abad Yitzchak Yaakov, and her mother, Shosha Bad Avraham Alevi. Also have uh, uh, that is it. Today is the 27th. That is it for today. May the Shemus have an Aliyah, Kranka Rafia, Velti Yashir Shemu Talia, and the Chob and Israel, good Gaben Shdiyar. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to start off our Gemara with a question. How many of you gentlemen ever baked challah? <laughs> <laughs> I've taken challah. I haven't baked challah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the reason I ask that question is because we're going to deal with kneading dough and what can be used in kneading dough or what can be used on smearing on the top of the challah. And as a result, <clears throat> it's going to give us an understanding of the fact of what's the difference between Lechem Oni and Matzah Ashira. Ashira. Okay, so that is our sort of a quick introduction to today's Gemara. Okay, I'm going to start, however, from uh, the uh, sort of the um, let's start from the top of Lamed Vav. Okay, we, we sort of covered a couple lines there. Ha'ochil nevela b'yom ha'kippurim patur. Ravina Amar, says Ravina. Ava filu tema Rabbanan. You could even say it was the view of Rabbanan. We saw there, Misha isuro mishum baal tochal chametz bilvad. She'en isuro mishum baal tochal chametz bilvad. Ela af mishum tochal tevel. Okay. So in other words, one it's one thing if it's only one isur, but in that case it was two isurim. Ela af mishum tochal tevel. Then the Gemara went on. Mide. Okay, since that's the case, bilvad kativ ela mechavarta kiderav sheisha. And that's where we stopped sort of yesterday. Okay? The other day, I'm sorry. I should have stopped. Okay, now our Gemara is going to pick up in case continuing sort of this, finishing up this particular aspect and then get to the one that I wanted to uh, begin focus on. Okay, so Gemara picks up and says, Tana Rabbanan, a new bright. Okay, now we know that uh, what kind of grain products are there that might be used for 
making chametz. Uh, I'm sorry, making matzah, matzah. Right. Well, what about the fact that we have bikurim? Or what about the fact that we have maser sheni or maser rishon? But particularly maser sheni. Okay. So we have grain products that are part of bikurim, part of the first fruits, part of the seven varieties that have to be brought for bikurim. We also have grain products that must be brought as maaser sheni. So our Gemara is going to really begin discussing now, could we use grain that fall into the category of either maaser sheni or bikurim? Would it be acceptable to use those to use for the uh, the grain to make our uh, pe Pesach matzahs. So let's see what the Gemara begins to tell us. What? Tanu Rabbanan says the Brayta. Yechol yotzei adam yedei chovato v'maaser sheni b'Yerushalayim. According to the Brayta, it would appear that a person could fulfill his obligation. To, uh, to have uh, his uh, matzah, okay, made from produce that was part of Maaser Sheni in Jerusalem. Why? Because we know Maaser Sheni has to be eaten in Jerusalem, right? Talmud Loma, however, the text says, Lechem Oni, that our matzah must be considered Lechem Oni. Now, I'm not going to translate that immediately, but I do want us to remember that there can be different explanations of the phrase Lechem Oni. One might be bread of affliction. One might be bread of a poor man. Okay. So now we're going to pick up. Talmud Lomar Lechem Oni. Our text says it has to be Lechem Oni. Ba'aninut, says the brighter. That which is eaten as part of one's status as an onain, as a mourner, in a sense. Okay, having lot the deceased, having the have a deceased loved one. Okay. Yatza ze she'inonechal ba'aninut ela besimcha. Divrei Rabbi Yossi Haglili. So that excludes Lechem Oni being viable to fulfill the mitzvah of matzah. Why? Because we're supposed to eat Ma'aser Sheni in Yerushalayim with simcha, with joy, with happiness. That's the view of Rabbi Yossi Haglili. <clears throat> now, he's challenged. Rabbi Akiva Omer. Rabbi Akiva says, no, we can do a Gzeira Shava from the phrase Matzot in one Pasuk to the phrase Matzot in another Pasuk, Reba. Okay? And we can therefore include the fact that from that point of view, we should be able to include Maaser Sheni produce to make our obligated matzah, our lechem oni on Pesach. Imken, if that's the case, ma Talmud lomar lechem oni. What do we mean then when we say the phrase lechem oni? Prat la'esa shenilusha biyayin v'shemen udavash. With the exception of dough that has been kneaded using wine, oil, or honey. Ma'itama de Rabbi Akiva. So what's the reasoning behind Rabbi Akiva's drasha and his non-acceptance of Rabbi Yossi Aglili? Mi kativ lechem oni. Is it really written lechem oni with an ayin vav nun yud? Ani kativ. 
It's written Ayin Nun Yud. Yud. So we have here an issue of Kray and Ketiv. How we, the, te, the word is written, written and versus it's how written. it's read, right? The Rabbi Yossi Haglili, and as far as Rabbi Yossi Haglili goes, Mi Karinen Ani, do we read it as Ani, as, for example, poor man's bread, okay, as opposed to bread of affliction? Oni Karinen. We read it only with a long vav, as if it had the vav. Okay? So what does Rabbi Akiva do with that text? Let's say reading it that way. Rabbi Akiva. Hai de Karinen Bay only. For Rabbi Akiva, the fact that we read it as only, Kiddishmoel. He understands it as based on a drasha by Shmuel. The Amar Shmuel Lechem Oni, that when Shmuel said it was Lechem Oni, he understood it as Lechem Sha'onin Alav Dvarim Harbei. Okay, the bread upon which we answer many things. Okay, we ask the four questions, we do other things, and that's his drasha. The Sava Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Akiva is of the opinion, Asa Shanilusha Bayayan Vashemen Vidvash Lo. So Rabbi Akiva is, is he of the opinion that bread, okay, or let's say dough, really needed using wine or oil or honey is not acceptable? Vahatanya. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a brighter? Ein lashin a sab pesach. We do not need the dough for pesach. Biyayin v'shemen udvash, using wine or oil or honey. V'im lash, and if it were needed using any of those agree, agree, ingredients, Rabban Gamliel Omer tisoreif miad. According to Rabbi Gamliel, it should be burnt immediately. The Chachamim Omrim, however, the sages say, Yeochel, that it may be eaten. So we begin to see there are multiple opinions. Okay, pausing just for a second. Okay, as to what is Lechem Oni? Is it dough that's only been kneaded with water, water, okay? Or could other items be used to knead the dough and it still be considered lechem oni, the variety of matzah needed to fulfill the obligation, okay? Picking up now, a story. Amar Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, trying to give a uh, proof for his view. Shavti, he said, it was my Shabbos to serve on Pesach. Haita Eitzel Rabbi Eliezer of Rabbi Yoshua. And I was sort of the serving, okay, when Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua were present. Okay, and what happened? Vilashti lahem and I needed for them the dough, right? Using wine or oil or honey. amruli davar, and they did not say anything to me. Okay? So Rabbi Akiva is trying to prove his point that it's permissible to use these, I'll say. Uh, other ingredients to knead the dough either along with water or in addition to water, in other words, or perhaps instead of water. Va'afal pi chen, va'afal pi, and even nevertheless, she'en lashin, says Rabbi Akiva, even though there are, I'm going to say, those who say that we can't knead the dough with these items, 
mikatfin bo, it's permissible to spread or smear the dough with these items, okay? For example, think of the fact that on challah, when you bake challah for Shabbos, it's very common to smear the top of the challah with egg so that it has a shiny appearance, okay? So the Gemara now continues. Etta'an, the Tanakama. This leads us then to the view of Tanakama. Okay. Right? That would seem to imply that it's permissible to use these items as part of the kneading of the dough. But perhaps other things like fruit juices would not be permissible because it would speed up the leavening process. The Chachamim Omrim, however, the sages say, at shalashin bo, that which you need with it, right? Mikat fin bo, you can also spread it, smear it. The et she'en lashin bo, and that which you can't need with it, ain mikat fin bo. You're not able to smear or spread it. Kenny, can I have a question? Yeah. Uh, did, they, did they drop off the the uh, the conversation about uh, lechem oni? And not not the, really. We're going to come back to because, that. Oh, well, because this is not lechem oni. This is matzashira. Right. We're not, we're going to come back to that. We're going to uh -huh. see that that's going to be an issue. Uh -huh. Okay. Veshavin, but they do agree. She'en lashin et ha'esa v'poshrin. But they do agree, says the Gemara, that one is not to knead the water, no, I'm sorry, not to knead the dough with lukewarm water. Right. Okay? Lo kasha. It's not a problem here. That we see we've got Rabbi Akiva saying different brightness. We're citing different brightness. Okay. Ha, says the Gemara, right? in this, so to speak, first brighter that forbids using these items, beyond tov rishon. That occurs when it's really for the first day of the holiday. Okay? That's what he's talking about. Right? Vaha, and in the second brighta, Biyom Tov Sheni. That occurs as we start the second day of the holiday. Kid Amar Laho Rabbi Yoshua, as was said by Rabbi Yoshua Libne to his sons, Yomakama Lo Talushu Li Bechalva, on the first day of the holiday. In other words, remember they had only seven days of Yom Tov, first and second, all right? So on the Yom Tov itself, right? Don't knead the dough for me using milk, he says. Mikan ve'elech, but on the other days, in other words, during Chol HaMoed, when you're making fresh matzah, which in those cases, I don't have the obligation of lechem oni for my seder, or my first day of Yom Tov, mikan ve'elech lo shuli bechalva. The other days you may make the matzah with kneading it with milk. But it was always a problem to, to, to put Rabbi milk Green, in. I thought we're not supposed oh. to make milk and bread. Ah, oh, we're going to get, th that was Zev. Zev, we're going to get to it. Okay. All right. All right, Bob, you had a question. Bob, you're... you're uh, same I'm, comment. Same, same one comment. about milk stick. Okay, good. Okay, so Baruch Shekivantem. Okay, good that you picked up on that because the Gemara is going to deal with it too. Mikan ve'elech lushu li b'chalva, he said. V'hatanya, says the Gemara. But aren't we taught elsewhere in a brighter? Ain lashin et ha'esa v'chalav. 
that okay. we're not permitted to knead dough with milk. Ve'imlash kol hapat asura mepnei hergel avera. And if he did knead the dough with uh, milk, okay, then that bread should be, I'm going to say, forbidden because of the possibility of committing a sin, namely eating that milchic bread with a fleshic meal. But this is what the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Yoshua meant. Yoma Kama, on the first day of the holiday, the Yontif, Lo Talushu Li Beduvsha, don't mix the knead the dough with honey. Mikan Ve'elech, Lushu Li Beduvsha. From here and on, from then on, one may knead the dough with honey. Ve'ibay it Ema. And if you want, I might say it was the following. Olam bechalva. Know that here we're still dealing with the question of kneading the dough with milk. Kida'ama Ravina, as Ravina said, Ke'en Torah Shari. But if you make it in the shape or the size of an ox's eye, in other words, you make that item that you're going to bake in a different form, right? Shari, then it's permitted. Hachanami ke'en Torah. Here too, he was implying that those are going to be matzah crackers, let's say, instead of boards or round, okay? In other words, they're in a different shape or a different form or a different size. And that way you'll know that they are milchik and therefore not eat them with a fleshic meal. Okay? So... So the Gemara did pick up on that issue. That's okay, that, Rabbi Green. That's okay for adults, but children wouldn't wouldn't remember. They wouldn't realize that it's milchik. Uh, it, well, you're right, Zev. Except unless it's the adult that's going to give them what to eat that morning, they would. The adult would know. Give them this uh, matzah crackers, matzah tam tams. You might remember those. Okay, right? Size of those tam tams made from matzah. Okay, All right. right. So that that would be the the only example. Okay. All right. Now, we said, isn't there this issue of lechem only going to come up? Let's we will, but let's see what happens. Now the Gemara continues. Now back to our Mishnah. Vishavin she'en lashin et ha'esa b'poshri. And we said that they agreed, according to the Mishnah, right? According to the Brita, really, earlier, that they agreed not to knead the dough with lukewarm water. So we're going to get to another shaila about that. Ma'ishna mi'menachot. How, then, are those unleavened cakes that we make for Pesach, I'm going to explain it this way, any different, asks the Gemara, from the unleavened loaves that are baked as part of mincha offerings, right? The meal offerings, <coughs> for example, like the two loaves on Shavuot or the showbread, right? The lechem upon him on Shabbos, or like any of the mincha offerings that are, are put when we have a korban toda. Okay? Now, remember in those cases, <coughs> a, it's a certain amount of meal, a certain amount of grain that becomes mixed with oil. Okay? And what's done is, okay, it has to be baked and pro produced in a manner where, according to some, it's crumpled up, and then the oil is mixed, or oil is added, and grain, and so on and so forth, and then put on the mezbeach. So they want to know, of course, how do we then say what's the difference between those 
Mincha offering unleavened cakes and our normal unleavened item for Pesach. Ditznan, as we teach in a Mishnah, kol haminachot niloshot beposhrin, that all the mincha offerings, that dough is needed in lukewarm water. Umishtamrim, we're going to include that. And then they are carefully observed so that they don't become chametz. Sheloyech mutzu, that they don't become chametz. Now the Gemara wants to explain. Im amru bezrizim, if we're going to say that the process of doing the mincha offering, all the steps are done by zrizim, namely diligent kohanim, yom ruba she'en zrizim. What are you going to say then in terms of the fact that for Pesach, okay, people in general make need their dough, okay? And they may not be zrizim. They not, may not be so diligent about watching it or ensuring that it doesn't leaven. Ihachi. If that's the case, says the Gemara, miltat nami latit. Okay. If that's the case, then maybe we can soak the grains or kernels of grain uh, in water in order to make it easier to use them. Right? That removes the bran. Alma, therefore. Ama rabbi zera. Says Rabbi Zera Amar Rabbi Bar Yimya Amar Shmuel. In the name of Shmuel, Chitin Shel Menachot. Okay, the grain, right? The wheat that is used for the Mincha offerings. Ein Lotatin Ota. What do we say? We're saying here that we don't soak them. Right? We don't, asks the man. But we say that the kneading is done by the j- diligent Kohani. But the soaking is not done by the diligent Kohani, says our Gemara. Velisha, the kneading, is the kneading of the dough done by the diligent Kohani? Vahaktiv, but isn't it written elsewhere in the Pasuk? Vayatsaik aleha shemen vagomer, vahivia el ha kohen, that one pours the oil into it and then delivers it, so to speak, to the kohen. Okay, namely, from that we understand, mikmitsa ve'elech mitzvat kohuna from the taking of the portion, right, by their handful, right, the three fingers and a palmful, and then using the thumb and little finger to sort of even it off, right? That has to be done by a Kohen because that is similar to the whole aspect of a Zrika, of the collection of the blood and the sprinkling of the bud for korbanot. Okay. But the same way we know with a korban, the slaughtering of the animal doesn't have to be a, by a kohen. So our Mishnah is going to tell us, our Gemara tells us now, Li made, it comes to teach us, al yitzika ubalila, namely of the pouring of the oil and the stirring of the oil, that that is valid by any person. Lisha. So in regards to the needing, let's say then that with regards to the needing, that the diligent Kohanim aren't involved. But I might argue, says the Gemara, but Makom's reason ita. But it is done in the location where the diligent Kohanim are present. So somebody then would still be supervising it. 
the Amar Mar, as the master said, right? Balaila Shera Bazar. Okay, Balila, I'm sorry. That the stirring is acceptable by a non Kohen. Chutz Lechumat Azara Psula. But if that stirring, mixing of the Mincha offering is done outside of the temple precinct, it is invalid. La afuke latita de ena brizizi. It comes to exclude, excuse me, the right the soaking, right? That's not done by the diligent kohani. Veloba makom's reason. And it's also not done in a place where the Kohanim, the diligent Kohanim, are found. <laughs> so we further ask, how is that different then from the example of the Omer Mincha, right? That's, remember that would come just after Pesach, right? That particular Omer, the answer is the Tanya, because we have a Brita that teaches Minchata Omer Lototin Ota, okay, but Sovrin Ota, that the Mincha of the Omer, we uh, right, we soak it and we then gather it. Sibur Shani. Why? Because this is done as part of a communal offering. And when it's done as a communal offering, then members of the great Sanhedrin are present and they ensure that it's performed properly. Let's go ahead. Now, a new writer, Tanu Rabbanan. Okay, we just went through this whole discussion. Remember based on what about using Maaser Sheni produce? And we said that's problematic, basically because the Maser Sheni has to be eaten in Jerusalem and in a status of Simcha. Okay? Gemara is now going to pick up on another kind of produce. Tanu Rabbanan, says the Brayta. Yechol yotze adam yedei chovato bebikurim. Maybe it's possible for someone to use first fruits grain and use that to make his matzah to be fulfilled, okay? Now, underlying this, I'm gonna remind everybody, really is still the question of how we understand lechem oni. Right. Does it has to be poor person's grain, right? Or does it have to be lechem oni is affliction? Okay, Talmud Loma, but the text tells us, Bechol Moshvotechem Tochlu Matzot, that in all your dwellings you should be able to eat matzah. Matzah Haneachelet Bechol Moshvotechem. Okay, that means the matzah is able to be eaten, as I said, in all dwellings. Yatsu Bikurim. Therefore, that excludes produce that are in the category of first fruits because they can only be eaten in Jerusalem. Divre Rabbi Yossi Haglili. That's the view of Rabbi Yossi Haglili. <coughs> However, again, Rabbi Akiva Omer says Rabbi Akiva disagreeing with him. Matzah Umaror. He's going to say, no, I'm going to base that prohibition of using first fruits produce, Bikurim, on a different reason. Okay? That we can't fulfill that obligation of a matzah from first fruits. I take the example of that night we're supposed to eat Matzah Umaror. Ma maror she'eno ba'ikurim, the same way maror is not part of the first fruits. 
af matzah she'ena b'bikurim. So likewise, the matzah can't be part of the from first fruits. Okay. Hey, ma ma lord, she'ena b'mino b'kurim. And likewise, we can say that whereas the matzah also, okay, is not it in its entirety, its whole species, its whole variety, is not considered part of first fruits. Af matzah she'ein b'mina bikurim. So we could say likewise, the matzah, okay, is not subject to bikurim. So that would seem to say that Rabbi Akiva would accept it for matzah, right? Otsi, so the Gemara challenges Rabbi Akiva's idea. Otsi chitin v'usa'orim, sheyesh b'minan bikurim. If that's the case, then maybe I can't use wheat or barley to make my matzah, because they are part of Bikurim, if we go by Rabbi Yossi Aglili's view. Talmud Loma, the answer comes back, right? Namely, we have the phrase again, right? That says to us, okay, Matzot, Matzot, Riba, again, that includes it. Right? So he's arguing that would include it, Bikuri. I matzot, matzot riba. Okay, if we're going to use that, okay, in that argument, right? Afilu Bikurim nami. Therefore, we should therefore also be able to use produce, okay, that comes from Bikurim. But the Gemara tells us, Hadar be Rabbi Akiva. Okay? That Rabbi Akiva, however, recanted from that view. Tatania. Why? Because we have a brighter. Yechol yetzei adam yedei chovato bikurim. One might have thought that a person could fulfill his obligation using produce of bikurim. Talmud Lomar tells us, Bechol moshvotechem tochlu matzah. In all your dwellings, you should eat matzah. Therefore, it's matzah that's able to be eaten wherever you dwell. Explaining it, we just rephrasing it. Yatsu bikurim moshavot That therefore excludes bikurim because it really can only be eaten in Jerusalem. Now, what happens? If that's the case, says the Gemara, then I should also have to exclude <coughs> produce that's ma'aser sheni, because that also we know should be only eaten in Jerusalem. Talmud Loma, however, here the text says, Again, matzot, matzot, riba. Okay, using the double language, okay, that it inc should include it. So the Gemara asks a very logical question here. Uma ra'ita, le rabot ma'aser sheni, ulahotzi bikurim. What and what's the basis that you see to exclude, <coughs> I'm sorry, to include? include. Right to include produce that is from that is classified as maaser sheni, but to exclude produce that is bikurim. Maybe I should do the opposite, right? So, but the answer comes marbe ani maaser sheni. I include produce from maaser sheni. Why? Sheyesh lo heter. Because it's permitted to be eaten in all one's locations. Because what happens if you, right? If you can't bring the Maaser Sheni to Jerusalem, what are you supposed to do? You poder, right? You redeem it. 
And once you redeem it, ideally, it should the money should then be brought to you, Jerusalem, to purchase food and eat in there. But that is not required if you live too far away, right? Okay, or you can't bring it. Umotzi ani bikurim, and I exclude bikurim. She'ein lahen heter bechol moshavot because they don't have a permissibility in all habitations. The Amar Rabbi Eliezer, as Rabbi Eliezer says, Minayin lama aser sheni shenitma shepodin oto afilu biyushalayim. How do we know that it's possible that maser sheni that became tame, right, may then become redeemed in Jerusalem, right? How do we know that? Talmud Loma, because the Torah text says, ki lo tuchal se'eto, if it's too great for you to bring it, okay? What does that mean? Ve'en se'et ela achila. And when we say bring it, the implication is Bring it to be able to eat it. Shana as we cite another Pasuk recently from Yosef, Vaisa Mas Eit Me'et Panav. Okay? That the meal that he invited his brothers, he took portions, Masot, from before him. So the Gemara now comes back to us and says, Man Shamat who is it that was the one who said that utilizing produce from Maaser Sheni, one can be Yotze, right? One can fulfill one's obligation. Rabbi Akiva. It was Rabbi Akiva. Ukimama et lahola bikurim, mi and he comes and excludes, excludes the Bikurim. right, from Bikurim based on the idea of it has to be all one's inhabitants. Shmamina Hadarbe. From this we can learn that perhaps Rabbi Akiva indeed recanted this idea. The Rabbi Yossi Aglili, and as far as Rabbi Yossi Aglili is concerned, okay. Does he also learn that you could use Maser Shani produce? Tebukle mi lechem oni. Told you we were going to come back to it. Right. Okay, he learns it from the phrase lechem oni. Mi shene'achal ba'oni. Okay, in other words, one who eats in affliction. Yatsa ze. Can the the ayin and all the olive and the ayin are, are machlif? No, no. All right, okay. It's not a question. Of, oh, in a but sense, only and only. Right, only and only. Right. In what is all? What is ayin? Right, mishin echal ba'oni. Okay, in affliction and poverty, it's poor man's bread. Okay. Yatsa ze she'ein na'achal ela besimcha. In other words. Right? So in other words, he comes back to his drasha of aninut, okay? That in sadness, in mourning, in affliction, that's what it is, okay? And not in happiness. Okay, why is that the case? Why is that Rabbi Yossi Aglili's view? Okay? Savar like Rabbi Shimo, because he's of the opinion of Rabbi Shimo. The Tanya who teaches in Biku, and teaches in a brighter, Bikurim Asurim Laonein, that the eating of first fruits is forbidden for someone who is an Onain. Okay. The Rabbi Shimon Matir. Okay. But Rabbi Shimon, so Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion that it's permissible. My Tama the Rabbanan. So we flip it a little bit and ask, so what's the reasoning of the rabbis? Because they say you cannot eat it in your gates. 
va'amarmar, and the master says, trumat yadcha, when the pasuk says, trumat yadcha, <coughs> right? In other words, the whole pasuk, lo tuchal le'echol b'sharecha, and in English, you may not eat it in your cities, the ma'aser of your grain, that's ma'aser sheni, and the truma of your hand, okay? So when it says, trumat yadcha, Elu Bikurim, that refers to Bikurim. The Itkish Bikurim Lemaaser, because he makes the connection, right, between Bikurim and tithing, right? Ma Maaser Asur Leonem, Af Bikurim Asur Leonem. The same way Maaser is forbidden for an Onem, so likewise, first fruits would also be forbidden for the owner. Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Green, so once again, why is um, uh, this forbidden uh, to an owner? Okay, so he's arguing his drasha is that the bikuri must be eaten in simcha, ah. in joy, uh -huh. okay? Um, the bikurim and the masa sheni eating the same? Right, right. That's what he's making and the, the pasuk if we look at, uh, Koran cites the Pasuk, I had scroll, I couldn't find it, but the, right, but it says there too, um, okay, right, but it also implies that it has to be done in joy, the Bikurim, right? Oh, okay, look at uh, on 36B2, note number 19. There's Art Scroll's note, okay? As part of the ritual presenting Bikurim, etc., etc., it is regarding this recitation that the Torah says, and you shall rejoice, yeah. etc. In other words, the farmer's heart is full of joy for the bounty he is harvesting. Oh, so we're comparing Bikurim to Masa Shane. So that was the issue, right. Okay. Okay. The Rabbi Shimon, Truma Karin Hu Rachmana. But Rabbi Shimon says, no, it's called Truma, Kit Truma, and therefore it's like Truma. Ma Truma Muteret Laonem, says Rabbi Shimon. Okay. Af Bikurim Mutar Laonem. So Bikurim would also be permitted <coughs> for an Omi. The Rabbi Shimon. So, and as far as Rabbi Shimon, this would seem to imply that he doesn't make that association. Okay? Simcha miha mechtav kativa baho. But joy or happiness, nevertheless, it's written there in the, in the Pasuk. Right? So the Gemara explains the kativ and when it says that you shall rejoice in all the good, he understands it to imply to not the mood of the, of the farmer, but to the time of the year, to, the, uh, to an appropriate <coughs> time when one brings the bikuri. Ditznan, as taught elsewhere in a Mishnah, right? Me'atzeret va'ad hachag, from Shavuot until Sukkot, me'vi v'kore, one brings the Bikurim and recites, namely he recites the phrase, Arami Oveda V, etc., etc., okay? That's the, let's call it the liturgy, the tefillah of the harvester, of the farmer at that time, right? However, he says, mehachag va'ad Hanukkah, if one were to bring his bikurim between uh, Sukkot and Hanukkah, maybe he brings the bikurim ve'eno kore, but he doesn't recite that piece. Okay. So we see that there's still this underlying 
problem as whether you wanted to translate lechem oni as bread of affliction, suffering, like one does during onen, okay, aninut, or whether one takes it means that it's lechem oni, the poor man's bread, namely it's something that paupers would eat because they could only mix water with the flour and not mix anything else with the flour. Okay. Now let's pick up on this as we continue. Tanu Rabbanan says the Brayta. Lechem Oni. When we say it's Lechem Oni, Prat Lechalut Vila Ashisha. This excludes Chalut, which is dough which has been boiled after being baked, Ula Ashisha, and it excludes also large cakes. Okay, and the only example that came to my mind is all of us, I think, are familiar with what's the difference in size between a pita and lafa. Okay, everybody knows what lafa is? Yeah. Okay, right? No. So think of the difference in the pita is a little bit thicker and smaller. Lafa is usually larger and thinner. Okay? So that was the best example I could come up with. Yechol lo yetzei adam yedei chovato ele bepat hadra'a. If that's the case, says the Gemara, one might have thought that one doesn't fulfill his obligation except with pas hadra'a, what we might call coarse bread, or really it means lesser quality uh, baked good made from barley as opposed to from wheat, for example. However, the Gemara tells us, what? Talmud Loma, Matzot, Matzot, Riba. Again, using the Hekkeshir, the two common words, it includes, namely, Va'afilu, Kematzot shall shlomo. Even if they were matzah of the finest quality, like the kind of bread that was on the royal table of King Solomon. Im came, ma talmud lomar lechem oni. So then what do we mean by lechem oni? Prat lechalut luashisha. With the exclusion we said of this boiled dough or this large dough. Umai mashma dahai ashisha. Okay. And what about, we say, this meaning of this phrase ashisha? Lishna dechashivuta. Do we say that important language? Dechtiv, because we have a pasuk that says in another way. Vayichalek lechol ha'am, lechol hamon Yisrael. Referring back to King Solomon, what did he give out to all of the people? <clears throat> Excuse me, right? He gave out to them the following, okay? Uh, namely, okay, Lemeish va'ad isha, man and woman, Leish chalat lechem echad, one chala, va'ashpar echad, and one ashpar, va'ashisha echad, and one ashisha. Va'amar Rav Hanan bar Abba, he explained, Ashpar echad mishisha papar. It means one sixth of an ox. Ashisha echad, one ashisha, mishisha ba'efa. Okay, it's one sixth of an efa amount. Upliga de Shmuel. And this disagrees with Shmuel's explanation. The Amar Shmuel Ashisha, because Shmuel said, what was an Ashisha? Garva de Chamra, that it's a jug of wine. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's written elsewhere, Ohave Ashishe Anavim. Okay? <clears throat> and those who love Ashishe of grapes. Tanu Rabbanan, says the Brighta, a new Brighta, but we'll just roll over a tiny bit. 
Ein ofin pat ava biyom tov bepesach. We cannot bake a thick loaf of um, Pesach. Divrei Beit Shammai. That's the view of Beit Shammai because of fear that it might leaven before the baking. But Beit Hillel says on the top of Lamad Zion, Matirin, it is permitted. The Kama Pat Ava, and how thick is it? Amar Rav Huna, Tefach. Shekein Matsinu Belechem Hapanim, Tefach. Because it's got to be a thick one means it's the, uh, a, uh, right, a fist, the height of a fist, almost a thick lift, right? Because that was the size of the lechem apanim in the temple. <coughs> and that's where we're going to stop, okay? Because we'll pick up then uh, some more discussion tomorrow on, uh, on the baking process. Mm. All right, everybody. Yep. Sure, sure. So Thank take you, care. Hi, Erwin, you're still on the line, Erwin Keller. Yes. What, what uh, were those big chalufs that were? In, was there a name for those 